Should I supplement with progesterone? This is a question I get a lot, whether it's for my patients or whether it's on the comments here or on my Patreon. This is a question I seem to be getting all the time. And although I cannot really tell you yes or no, there are a couple of things that I can share with you so that you can make up your mind if taking extra progesterone is a good idea for you or not. So the first thing I always ask or I try to find out when I get this question is, do you actually have a progesterone deficiency? Because if not, then hmm, additional progesterone? I'm not sure if that's a good idea. And how do you know if you have a progesterone deficiency? Well, of course, you could take a blood test. That is one of the things you could do. And I did do a video about this in the past as well, that it's really important that you have this blood test taken at the right time. And I'll plug in the video that's applicable. It's about the 21 day progesterone test. So go check that out if you haven't heard of this yet or if you're intending on taking it. And the other way for you to figure out is by charting. And I have a progesterone deficiency module on my charting course. So if you're already charting and you wanna figure out, if you check the boxes for progesterone deficiency, you can learn how to do that today. One of the indications of low progesterone could be having a short luteal phase, which is the second part of your cycle. So it's after ovulation. I did a video on this as well, which I'll make sure to link in, but the gist of it is that the second half of your cycle after ovulation, you're going to want to have about 14 days. 14 days is ideal, 12 days and up is okay. Anything below that is definitely an indication of low progesterone and can give you problems when you're trying to conceive. And even if with all of this information, you have established that you indeed have low progesterone in the second half of your cycle, there are still a couple of things to think about before you indeed decide to go for the supplementation. And there are different things to take into consideration whether you are still trying to conceive or if you are already pregnant or if you suspect that you might be pregnant and you are already in the second half of your cycle. Let's first address assuming that you are trying to conceive but you aren't pregnant yet. Then my answer would usually be if you are doing things to address that estrogen progesterone imbalance or the absolute progesterone deficiency, then I would not recommend to be taking additional progesterone because the progesterone is basically a piece of sellotape. It doesn't solve the underlying issue of what is causing your low progesterone. It is just masking the picture. And yes, it might help you have longer cycles, but again, it's not solving the underlying issue. And that is what you want to do. You don't just want to mask the picture and treat the symptoms. You want to treat the cause of the symptoms. So especially when I am seeing patients or if they are detoxing on one of my protocols, I usually say, stay away from the progesterone because it doesn't show you if you are gaining any progress on your treatment. It masks the picture and it's very difficult to identify what is going on with your hormone balance. Not only that, if you are taking additional progesterone, where is the incentive for your body to start producing more or to regain balance? You are basically keeping the imbalance because you are supplementing with the progesterone and your body doesn't need to do anything to up the dose of the progesterone. It's a different story if you know you have progesterone deficiency, but you're not doing anything about the cause. Are you not seeking any kind of natural treatment to address uh, maybe adrenal stress? Because that could be one of the reasons that you have low progesterone. Or if you're not addressing anything around estrogen dominance, because that often goes hand in hand with progesterone deficiency. If you're not doing anything along those lines, but you are trying to conceive, then yes, maybe taking additional progesterone is a good idea because if you don't, then there's a possibility that you have miscarriage after miscarriage or chemical pregnancy after chemical pregnancy because your body starts to flow before the embryo is able to implant. If there aren't any issues with the embryo itself and it is able to develop properly and it's really just a low progesterone issue, then this could be the reason that you are miscarrying. However, there are so many reasons that could underlie miscarrying and I've done a video on that as well. And if you sadly have the experience of multiple miscarriages, I highly recommend that you check that video out because I think low progesterone is really overrepresented as a miscarriage cause. In my experience, there's usually lots of other reasons causing the miscarriages and not so much the progesterone issue. So the scenario might be a little bit different if you are already pregnant or you suspect that you are pregnant 
but you know that you have a low progesterone issue. You know that you have a history of short luteal phases or having spotting before your period starts. In that case, I always recommend to my patients to get a blood test, first of all, and then if the blood test suggests that you have low progesterone indeed for the phase that you are in of your pregnancy, then your practitioner can prescribe additional progesterone and then it's probably a good idea to take that. Because if you do miscarry, you don't want to regret not having used the progesterone and wondering, well, would I still have my baby if I did take that additionally? As a homeopath, I'm always a bit concerned about synthetic hormones, but progesterone is one of those things that I find interferes with the hormone balance the least, especially if you compare it to things like the contraceptive pill or fertility drugs or steroids is a big one. So in that case, it's better to be on the safe side. And this is what we have conventional drugs for as well, right? If you're wondering if it's possible to supplement on a homeopathic level for progesterone, yes, that's possible, but you would need to have your case taken properly because the type of treatment that applies to one woman that has low progesterone doesn't apply to another woman. Plus, you're going to want to have that ongoing monitoring, like what I do with my patients. I will send them in for a blood test. We will follow their chart, see what's happening. And if you can't do that, then again, you're going to want to be on the safe side and use the additional progesterone until your placenta takes over, which is around week 12. It is good to keep in mind that if you use progesterone, whether you're just trying to conceive right now or you are already pregnant, that the progesterone will keep your temperatures up artificially. So if you're charting and you're following your temperatures to see if your flow might start soon or if you potentially are miscarrying, you won't be able to see that because the progesterone is keeping up the temperatures artificially. If you're trying to conceive or you're already pregnant, you're gonna to wanna to see this video. In that video, I go into the first five things you're going to want to start doing the moment you have that positive, pregnancy test. And in the meantime, see you in the next video. Bye.